There's a wise saying. It says that if you do not learn from history, then you are doomed to repeat it. And this is so true because history repeats itself over and over again. There is nothing new that is happening today that has not happened before. There is nothing new about our political system. There is nothing new about our world's condi world condition. There is absolutely nothing new about your life today that wasn't present in your life in the previously. If you have lived 30, 40, 50 years, then you know you are already in a cycle of repeating a life that you've already had before. Repeating years, a decade that you already had before. It may look slightly different, but today I'm going to show you how to use that repetitive cycle that is just the law of nature to be able to then move your life to a whole new level so that your cycles continue to cycle forward and give you the fulfillment and the desires and whatever it is that you choose in your life, give it to you now. So what's up, everybody? How you doing? This is your Coach Rance. And first, I want to thank everybody for joining me. Thank you. I give gratitude for everybody who's joining me from Patreon, for who's joining me from, from on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, who comes over to the YouTube channel. And I know you're going to hit that subscribe button. You're going to hit that bell icon. It really helps the channel. But today, I want this video to get 100 likes. I just a hundred likes. I'm not even asking for a lot. That's a hundred likes. It gets over a hundred views. This video will definitely get over a hundred views, but I want to see it get a hundred likes. A hundred likes. And for every dislike, we got to go a hundred. We got to go one more over. So if there's one dislike, we got to get 101 likes. If there's five dislikes, we got to get 105 likes. So that's the goal for this video, and that's what I look forward to seeing. And I hope you guys will see that as well. So share this video. Share this video. Share this video. Now, how many times has this happened to you? You see, you come into your adulthood, and one of the first things you do is you run up credit cards, you amass a bunch of debt. You want to get a car like your friends, you want to get your first apartment, you want to put furniture in it, and all these things, and you get into debt. And then you get a little bit more mature, you start paying attention to your finances, you start paying attention to your job, and you all of a sudden you get promoted here, you get promoted there, you find a better job here or a better job there that pays you more. And then next thing you know, you're making more money. And you take that money that you're making and you say, I'm going to pay off this credit card. I'm going to pay off this furniture note. I'm going to pay off this car note. I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay, I'm going to pay. And you pay your debt down. And then... You're cruising along. You think you're in the flow of financial abundance. And then you get married or you have a child or something in life happens. You see, the first thing in life that happened is that you became an adult. And then you amass debt and then you pay off the debt. Now you're getting married. Now you have a child. Now you... Uh, you lose your job. Something else traumatic happens that was traumatic, similar to that trauma, and you get back into debt. You buy a bigger house to accommodate the wife and the child, or the husband and the child. You you get a bigger house because you move to a different state. You get a bigger house because now you have two cars. You need a two car garage. You get a bigger house, and now you need more furniture to furnish this bigger house. Now you need, you need, you need, and all of a sudden. You're back in debt. And now you're working. You're working. You're looking for promotions. You're looking for opportunities to increase your money because now you're in your 30s and you want to make more money because now you've gotten yourself back into the same type debt that you were in when you was in your 20s. Maybe in your 20s it was $10,000 worth of debt, but now you're in your 30s and it's $50,000 worth of debt. And so you then work your way up the chain and you get promoted and now you're making more money you pay the debt down you're paying the house note down you're amortizing that loan and you're paying that house note note down you're, uh, the kids are getting a little bit bigger so they don't cost as much as far as diapers and formulas and all these kinds of things and so the debt gets a little bit lower and then you reach your 40s and 45, 50 now the children are going to college now you're starting to think about retirement. Now you want to either downsize or you want to move to like the sunny state or a warm state. And you start thinking about those things and you want to travel more. But the kids go to college and bam, another traumatic financial situation. 
and you go back into debt again. College loans for the kids. You just finished paying your college loans off. Now you got college loans for the kids. Now you want to downsize your house. Now you want to buy the house down in Boca Raton so that you can move down there in your, flat, in your 60s and 70s. So you amass more debt again and then you cycle continues. And it happens over and over again. Now in some ways there's nothing you can do about this cycle. In the same way relationships. Your relationship is great, it's beautiful. You met this person, wow, they're fantastic. And then a little bit of time goes on, you get to know them and then uh, you see the chink in the armor, you see the next chink in the armor. But eh, you don't quite know how to work through this when you're getting into arguments and then finally the relationship breaks and it's over. And then you go, wow, I've got to get myself together, get my life together, get me all fixed up and ready for my husband, ready for my wife. And then you get yourself all ready for your husband and ready for your wife. And then you meet that person. It's like, oh, my God, this is the person, this is the woman of my dreams. And then you see the chink in the armor. And you see the problem start. And the, um, the conversations happen. And the arguments go and the next thing you know you break up again and you're like oh there's just no good women out there there's no good men out there and then you I'm going to protect myself and I'm going to keep people at bay and I'm going to get myself because only God is going to send me my perfect person I'm going to be patient and wait and then you do that and you're patient and you're waiting and you're patient and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're patient and then they show up with the golden glow around them and you're like oh yes it's finally here it's finally here and you go through the same cycle again. How do we stop these cycles? Well, the answer is we can't. You can never stop the cycle. It's the cycles of life. It's the way things happen. It's the way things are. But what we can do is figure out how we can make these cycles of life, this repetitive cycle, benefit us, help us, be something that we can control how it functions. You know, you were given dominion over every aspect of your universe. The how you think about things, how you relate to things, how the world moves around you, how people talk to you, how you talk to yourself, all these things you have control over. Humans are the only animal on the planet that has enough reasoning and consciousness and emotional control that we can conform our environment to fit us. The lion cannot go up to the North Pole and build a farm and have the gazelles on it and build shelter and build heating units and water purification. The, the lion can't go do that. The chimpanzee cannot go to Antarctica and do that. No other animal on the planet, the dolphin will never come out of the ocean and build habitats for itself. But the human animal, man, with his divine spark, is the only creature that has the ability on this planet that we know of, can do this, can change its environment, can control its own personal universe. And you have that ability. It is within you to be able to do it. And you have to understand that there is a quad to this capacity. You heard other videos that I've done before. I talked about a capacity map that allows you for infinite growth, meaning capacity plus B squared, balanced business life, balanced um, personal life equals infinite growth. Well, in order to get there, we must understand that there is a quad that is within you. That quad being the spiritual, your relational, your health, and your wealth. When those things are out of sync, you lack fulfillment in life. When you do not have fulfillment in life, you continue to hit bumps in the road. You continue to grow, grow, things seem great, then all of a sudden you hit a roadblock and it tears your life down. The walls come crumbling down. It feels like all the devil, the imps, the demons, the, the bad spirits, the I don't know, whatever religion you believe, all the negative things, the negative portions of the scale, the negative portions of your brain, Everything comes and they circle you, circle you, screaming and yelling. They're circling you and they blow their trumpets and all your walls of your universe, your life, fall down. Everything goes kaput. You get out of the flow of the way. All of a sudden, instead of you being like water and getting into the flow, instead of you being uh, uh, like water and getting into the places 
that no other in, in, element can get into, instead of you getting into the cracks and crevices that no other element can get into, instead of you conforming and causing the universe to function for you, no, now you're swimming against the current. Now you're fighting against the current. Instead, you're holding on and you're losing all your energy and you're going against the way, you're going against your natural self, you're going against nature, and the next thing you know, life is beating you down. It's beating you down because you haven't found fulfillment in capacity of your quad. So in the spiritual sense, many people go out and they proclaim their spirituality. I see people all the time claiming this and claiming that and I'm this and I'm that and God is with me and God is with me and Buddha and Karma and Allah and you know everybody and then Dharma is my Dharma is being satisfied. Everybody saying something. Right? Krishna. Right? Uh, Lakishma. Yes. You know, Shango. Ah. We're saying these things. We have a belief, but we don't know it. We don't know it. We can quote famous words, but we don't know the meaning and the problem with us speaking it without knowing it is that it never comes into existence. How many people have went to the altars and whether they gave prayer, whether they gave food, whether they gave money, no matter what they gave, even when they gave blood, how many people have went to the altars with words of speech, lacking knowing, and then it never becomes something they live and their actions don't follow, so they don't get their results. They came to the altar last year asking for financial blessing. They came to the altar offering food for financial blessing, and yet the next year they come back again asking for the same. Whatever your spirituality, you have to get into the knowing of it. To the point where when you speak it, it becomes the essence of you. You're really only speaking the essence of what's already there. You're not speaking it into existence. You're speaking what is already in existence inside you. When your God and God is inside you is speaking what is already present, then you are in knowing of your spiritual self. And your walk becomes a lot easier. Your walk becomes a lot easier. Your eye becomes open. Your eye becomes open. You no longer live in the fear. And we're going to do a whole other video about the living in the fear and your eye being open. And when your eye is closed, what that fear does to you. But your eye is open. You're no longer living in fear. You've faced your fears and you've overcome. You've overwhelmed the fear. And then the second is your relational self. How you relate to yourself, how you relate to others, and how you relate to the work of life. The work of life is how you move in life. The work, the relation, work relating to others is how do you relate what other people say, do towards you, how they think towards you. Does it impact you to the point where it causes you to not be able to relate to yourself? No. You have to learn how to relate to yourself in perfection regardless of how others relate to you and regardless of how others walk around you and how they work around you. You have to relate to yourself in a state of love where you know exactly who you are, why you are, and what you are in order for you to say that I know that I am divine. I know that there is a God, God is creator inside me. I know that I can manifest whatever it is that I choose to truly manifest, that my subconscious mind is not overwhelming the conscious mind, but that they are working in unison. They have great communication. When you can do this, then you begin to be able to relate to others in a way where you can truly understand and know love with one another. You can truly understand and know companionship with one another and cooperation with one another. When you can start doing that, then you can truly be my brother's keeper. Then you can truly be have unity. You can truly have unity, but until you know thyself, the greatest place of discovery is in the knowing of thyself. Until you can know thyself, you cannot know others, nor can you know your walk. So then in your health, it's very basic in your health. Calories in minus calories out equals your weight. But the type of calories in 
minus the calories out also determines the general health of the cells of your body. Every cell of your body needs to be fed nutritiously. Every cell of your body needs to be oxygenated. Every cell needs its uh, better water. One of the reasons why we can't relate to ourselves and that eye remains closed is because we've calcified our pineal gland and so the DMT does not filter through our body which allows us to be able to see visions that connect to other layer, layers and levels of consciousness. So your health is not only your physical health, your emotional health, but also your mental health and your spiritual health is so much involved in that. And how much do you think your relationships are involved in that? Tremendous amounts. So your health is very, very key, is, vi is very vital. So first we start with a proper diet. If you can go completely plant-based, then go completely plant-based. Stop taking in fluoride that calcifies your brain. Start eating fruits that are dark in nature so that you can release more uh, of the good serotonins and DMT into your system so that you can have vision. What does good wisdom say? My people will perish for their lack of vision. In the Buddhist tradition, in the Hindi tradition, it's about opening the third eye in order to become enlightened. In order to reach samadhi, you have to open that third eye. You have to open the part of you that gives you vision. When you dream at night, it is the release of DMT from the pineal gland that gives you your vision, your astral projections. You can have all the crystals, all the stones. You can turn around three times and cast incantations all day long. But if your pineal gland is calcified, no visions will come. It will only be thoughts that you want to have, thoughts that you desire, but you will not be connecting to, uh, to upper layers, upper or lower levels of consciousness. So you have to be concerned of your health, take concern of your health. And the last is your wealth. I can't feed the homeless if I can't feed myself. I can't help my brother if I can't help myself. I can't provide a greatness for my children if I can't help myself. And in doing that, I can't get into my spiritual self, I can't get into my relational self, and, or nor can my health if I'm stressed about my finances all the time. And so amazing, financial videos are probably my least watched videos. People don't watch the financial. Now if I say I can get you a 740 credit score, you'll watch that because you're looking for the quick fix. But what we don't want to do is be patient, reset our finances, and follow a system. Many think that they will be a slave to a budget, but you have to remember you are the one setting the budget. Many people think they can't reset their finances, but you're controlling your money. You can you also control your actions. You don't have to go to the club all the time. You don't have to go partying. There was a young lady, and she knows who I'm talking to, had a little issue recently. But she was supposed to be in a financial reset. And I said to her, if you were in your financial reset, then you would have been home this night. And if you were home this night, then the altercation that you found yourself in, the situation that you found yourself in, the status that you found yourself in, and now leading into the next level status, because all these things have built up you that you're going to find yourself in, they would not have be so had you done your financial reset and set down. And this is the buildup of life. If you're, doing, if you're not doing your financial reset, but you're financially strapped and you're stressed, then you are spending money, spending money, spending money. Now you're stressed. I want, to, I want some stress relief. So I want to go relieve my stress, relieve my stress. But oh, I made a mistake in that and spending more money and doing things I shouldn't be doing. And now that's put me into a negative situation that is going to cost me even more money than the stress relieving cost me. And now my financial reset seems even further away. We have to be disciplined in our finances, reset them, and then after we re reset them, follow a system that works. My 70 10 10 10 plan, it works. There is not one person, not one financial person I've ever spoken to, and I'm 47, and I've been touting the 70 10 10 10 plan before there was an internet. But I am 47, and not one financial person has ever said, that's a bad plan. That plan won't work. 
every person, every one of them, at to, in some degree, some way, some shape, form, or fashion, have said, if only the world could do that right now. If only my family could do that now. If only I had known about that. That system works. So you have to get on the 70 10 10 10 plan. You have to. 70% of your household income, 70% of your life that you must pay your bills is only based on 70% of your income. 10% goes to saving, 10% goes to um, play, that's your fun money, and then 10% goes to investments, but you have to know what kind of investments to get involved in. When you get that four quad, that understanding of that four quad, you can now start living a life that fills you to capacity. And when it fills you to capacity, you have a couple of things happen. One, you become, you have fulfillment and so you become happy. You find more joy in life. You find security and your certainty as well as the excitement of being able to do things that brings about, you know, the... Uh, uncertainties of life because now you can experiment and try different things without jeopardizing your security. Now you're able to contribute to the world more, contribute to your better to your family more, contribute to to everyone around you more. You have the health, the energy to do so, you have the finances to do so, you have the calm and peace, serenity to do so. You have all these things within you to do so now because why? Your work to capacity and when you feel to capacity, now you have the opportunity to expand. And every time you expand and you feel that capacity, you have the opportunity to expand again. And that it becomes a new cycle. You understand? That becomes your new cycle. You expanded your finances. Opportunities will come. And now you have a system that you're following. And now you can take on those opportunities and expand some more. You've expanded your relationship to yourself. And now another person comes in and you love yourself. They love themselves. Then you can expand in your relationship with them. And now you do it together. And both of you are expanding within your relationship. So that when children come, it's just an expansion. When good friends come, it's an expansion. But you keep your core of certainty because you are filled to capacity. They keep their core of certainty because they're filled with capacity. And now you're contributing to the relationship life of whole new generations. And they are looking at you saying, wow, 30 years of beautiful, blissful marriage, being able to work through every challenge, overcome every trial. Wow, that is beautiful. I need to emulate that. I want to emulate that. How do I emulate that? Get your spiritual life right. Get your relational life right. Get your health life right. Get your wealth life right. And you can experience this, this beauty of a relationship that we have because we are complete in our capacity. We are complete in our capacity. Now there are some different other additional things that you have to realize to be able to do this. One is called the trivium, to which I speak of quite often. In the trivium, it is being able to understand the facts, being able to well, be able to gather the facts, then understand those facts, and then take that facts and form it into your rhetoric so that you can then put it into practice. And that wisdom that comes back says, what did it give me? What were my results? That cycle, and then let me go back and work it again. And I work it again. I, did I understand? Did I gather enough facts? Did I understand the facts correctly? Maybe I need to tweak my understanding because I am always open. Remember on the other video I talked about belief and faith. Faith is being open to the fact that it may be something different. It may give you new information. It may change your paradigm. It may be something that leads you into a path that gets you into the right flow of life. Whereas belief is something that say, where you say it can only be this way. I can only run my finances this way. I can only run my love life this way. I can only do my health this way. I can only do my spirituality this way. But when I have faith, I just know that I'm in the flow of the universe. And I'm always pulling to the right. My vibration is always high and moving to the right. And we do this through un that, that, that having the facts, knowing what those facts mean, and then having the wisdom to put them into practice, but also the wisdom to come back and review my understanding so that I can then apply them again to get a different result if I'm not getting the result that I desire. Think about it. Most people are not getting the results that they desire because they're not willing to go back and reorganize, rethink their facts, and come to a different conclusion, which gives them a different method of working, of moving, of action behind them. Which takes me to the next one, which is you have to have, a, you have, to have that commitment 
to the true law of attraction. And that true law of attraction comprised of all seven hermetic laws. The law of mentalism, the law of correspondence, the law of cause and effect, the law of gender, the law of vibration, the law of rhythm, and the law of polarity. You have to understand those laws and how they work one with another so that they create the life that you have and create your opportunity to change your cycle. If you're vibrating low on the polarity on the pole, then you have to change your vibration, your activity, change the people around you, change how you relate to yourself, change how you relate to the universe, change how you relate to your health, and then vibrate higher and higher and higher to move you to the right side. And when you get to the right side, when that law of rhythm, that swing tries to take you back, you know how to recognize the triggers hit, you know how to recognize the swing back, and then you change your vibration again and you move with it. In many industries, people do not pay attention to the rhythm of the industry, which is why they find themselves in financial uh, they're in financial desperation, they find themselves in employment desperation, which then affects their health and affects their relationship, and then their spirituality becomes a begging, begging, why, please, 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 or why me, why me, begging, begging, please, why me, why me, is what their spirituality becomes, and their entire capacity is thrown off, and they are destined to repeat the same thing, even if they find another opportunity. So, what we have to recognize is that those triggers help us to see that, oh, the real estate market has changed. Let me change with it. Let me reorganize my facts, get a different understanding, and put a new rhetoric in place, a new wisdom in place. Oh, my health is changing. Let me reorganize my facts. My relationship is changing. Let me reorganize my facts. When all these things keep happening, let me reorganize my facts, get a different understanding, and then move differently so that I can polarize myself back to the right and not allow my swing to go all the way back to the left. That is a truer understanding. That is a truer understanding of the laws of, of attraction, the law of abundance, the law of uh, uh, reciprocity, the, uh, sowing seeds, reaping and sowing, whatever law you want to start adding to it. But at the end of the day, they all fall in those seven. Those seven are the core and everything else comes out of it. But when you can understand that and apply that to life, then you can begin to become successful in the way that you desire because you are now operating at full capacity. And that's what I can provide for you as a coach. That's what I provide for you on these videos. That's why I, I'm very grateful for everybody who supports the videos, everybody who goes to Patreon, everybody who um, joins me. I will get back to live shows soon. Everybody who gives during the live show, who donates during the live show, everyone who buys product from Uncle Ren's Popcorn, URPopcorn.com. I appreciate and give gratitude to all of you because that is my purpose, is to teach you. And for those that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, I, I, I'm seeing great things out of you. Your meditations and your affirmations have been working wonders for you and I want you to continue in those meditations that I've taught you. Um, those ah meditations, those tantric meditations, those, those 444 meditations, the 1010 meditations, all the meditations that I've been teaching you guys and showing you guys based on your needs. Uh, just to see them working in you, the affirmations and the other work that I've seen you guys doing. I'm getting the emails. It is amazing. I'm I'm so grateful to be a part of your journey, and I look forward to being a part of your journey. Then you can contact me at CoachRens.com if that is your desire, if that is your wish. I am here. But I know this video is, is, is a little bit long, but it's okay because long videos are good because that means that you're paying attention. So in the comments, I want you to let, first let me know if you came all the way to, got all the way to the end. And then where do you think you are in your fulfillment of your capacity in the quad? Where do you think you are? Do you think that you are, we're going to use a, a car for example, do you think that you're, oh, video cut off before I finish. So let me finish. We're going to use a car for example. So just like on a car, we're going to say that the fuel measure, the measurement of the fuel, fuel gate, it, that's your polarity scale, fuel. So uh, there's full and there's empty. And then there's half and there's a quarters in between and there's eighths in between the quarters. So where are you on that scale? That's what I want you to answer in there. Where are you? And in order to do this and it be successful for you, you have to be honest about it. So where are you on the scale using fuel? Are you half full, quarter full, you know, quarter towards full, one eighth away from full, you one eighth away from empty? Where are you and where you are, that, that's your starting point. And that's where we have to move up that scale to get you 
completely satiated, get you completely in a mode where you have total fulfillment in your life. So I want to appreciate you guys. I thank you. I thank all Patreons. I thank everybody who subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon and hit the like button and everybody who comes over from the other programs. Thank you very much. And remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is not negotiable.